the pods. We go back to what was the first pod is pod one, and we rotate them throughout each week because they're always the same day. And today, Oklahoma State, Baylor, TCU, and Texas Tech. So the Big 12 South pod is kind of yeah, how that, I'm referring yeah, yeah, to this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's. I know yes. TCU technically wasn't, and you know Houston's in Texas, but like for the sake of just defining these four pods, this is the Big Twelve South division of the four pods. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then when UConn joins, okay, yeah, they'll be now, in the north or let's something. Let's start with a, a team that looked good, beat a good team in South Dakota State. Mike Gundy and company, kind of like clockwork. Um, Arkansas on the road in Stillwater against the top 20 team in Oklahoma State. 11 o'clock is that kickoff on ABC on Saturday. I, I think Oklahoma State uh, should be able to control the tempo of this game. Uh, Arkansas has got some interesting things going for them uh, offensively when you've got tail and green. But I just think that given where Arkansas is and where Oklahoma State is and how ridiculously fundamentally sound Oklahoma state will be compared to what Arkansas could probably pull off that this should be an Oklahoma state win. Uh, they're at home, but I do think, like I said, yesterday in the top five, they do need to be on upset alert because you know, Arkansas is backed into a corner. They've got an athletic quarterback. You kind of sleepwalk through something and look, Oklahoma state's not immune to early season doldrums. We've seen it before where they kind of take something for granted. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if Arkansas gave them a run, but I really would um, be surprised if Arkansas won. Well, first of all, I think they had a really nice showing in their first game, given that it was a really good non-con opponent that was riding a long win streak mm -hmm. in the FCS, you know, back-to-back -back national champion, South Dakota State, and uh, they handled them. It took a little while to, like, pull away, but they handled that game, and they look like a team that has a lot of veterans that are back and ready to make another run. And I think that's exactly what you're hoping to see if you're Oklahoma State was to see last year carry over because so much of that is back and so much of that was successful. Ollie Gordon had a great day, and yet it's just lost because we're just sort of used to him having big games. But he had, you know, 100 plus yards, three touchdowns, just did what you expect him to do nearly every week, you know, when he's out there at this point. Uh, so that was good to see just him, you know, back in uh, hitting his stride. Alan Bowman was solid and, it gets mentioned, but probably not enough. That we do like talk about Bowman and Gordon, and I say we, I see like the collective of just everybody that talks, but we don't probably give enough love to the wide receivers at Oklahoma State. I think it gets mentioned from time to time, but I don't know if it gets mentioned often enough. Uh, they're really good, uh, really talented, and I think this is a, a good veteran, deep team, just like you knew coming in, and that was on display last week. Now, this week is very interesting because Arkansas is an SEC bottom dweller um in terms of just how they stack up with the rest of that league on a on an annual basis but they are very interesting this year because they have a coach on the hot seat who went and made changes and that included bringing bobby petrino of all people yep. back into the fold and at least him being back in fave it'll look like it's it's going to work pretty well last week Taylor green coming over from boise state gives them a different dynamic at quarterback Jaquindon Jackson, who they brought in from Utah, I like him. had 100 yards last week, um, and he's a really, really good player. So I think offensively, Arkansas is going to be a really interesting test for uh, the Oklahoma State defense. Oklahoma State should win this game. They need to win this game for themselves and for the Big 12, uh, perception-wise. This is one of those that could ding you on your resume later in the year when everybody's stacking up the non-con yep. comparisons. So they're favored. They're at home. And they've got a lot back. They need to win this game. I think that they will, but I do think Arkansas is an intriguing matchup for them. I uh, I like Brent, uh, Presley, uh, the wide receiver. You mentioned some of the receivers. That, oh, well, tougher than nails. I mean, he's a guy that gets bent up in different directions and just gets back up and catches another pass, whether it's over the middle or elsewhere. He'll get you that extra yard, too. Yeah, this is one of those that you win this game. Uh, you're not going to get a lot for it other than it's a win. Might get but in the top 15. It yeah. might put you up a notch or two or four, and it will be important because it's no longer – it's what your record is against the other Power Four conferences, and this would be a win no matter who it is and where they end up in the SEC. Yeah, if there's a comparison, let's say Utah wins the conference, but Oklahoma State played them down to the wire, and they are a legit playoff candidate because that was their first loss of the year or something. Uh, although – 
that means they would have had to have handed Utah a loss in a couple of weeks. But you know where I'm saying, like yeah. what I'm saying here, they're fighting for the second Big 12 spot if there will ever be one each year in the playoff. And you start stacking up the resumes and you're comparing them to like the fifth place team in the SEC. Well, you might have both played Arkansas. That might be a tiebreaker. Or you might say like, well, they played a team from the SEC. You know, like So yeah, the, the, for the resume, you need wins like this. Even if it's not the best team out of that league, it still matters. And, and plus, you just want to win your games and not have to worry about it coming down to the resume. So, yeah, this is a big one for Oklahoma State. And also, these two teams don't play often at all. They're right next to each other, but they don't ever play. This has not ever been like a longstanding rivalry. They had a little bit of one like back in the day, like in the 80s, but uh, they have not played very much. So this is actually a really unique matchup, even though they're in neighboring states. And that, that also is a, another cool wrinkle to this game. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because Arkansas and Oklahoma, there was that famous Orange Bowl when Arkansas shocked OU and beat them up pretty good. But they don't, that's that's interesting. They don't play a lot against teams that are connected to them. Arkansas, Missouri now, uh, they're in the same conference. So they're well, they're, they're going to play. Yeah. Oklahoma's going to play them all the more time, than ever at think, this point. Yeah. But Oklahoma State and Arkansas, they played. 46 times, but um, let's see where that was. The that's last cool. time was in 1980. They haven't played since 1980. So that's what I'm getting at in terms of this rivalry. Had its moments back in the day, but it's been non-existent for, shoot, three decades now? Yeah. Uh, four. Uh, four. 1980 is 44 oh, years. Because that's how old I am. Hey, I'm getting so old, man. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's <laughs> all I am. They haven't played this since well, I was what born. What am I then? I mean, yeah. like, I was checking out those. Uh, well, here's the thing. You remember, like, you, in your mind, you probably think, of, oh, yeah, I can think of an Arkansas and Oklahoma State game. Craig and I can't. No. No, that's right. How about you know, this? Do you know who the coaches were? Okay, Arkansas, 1980, Frank Burroughs. Burroughs yeah. Nope. Oh, oh, he retired. That's right after Daryl Royal had This was in Little too. Rock. It wasn't even in Fayetteville. It was in Little Rock. It was oh, a 33 to 20. Hold on. 33 to 20 Arkansas win. Ken no, Hat not Ken Hatfield. God almighty. Are you sure? Lou Holtz. Uh, Lou Holtz was the Arkansas head coach. All right. Because in 82, I flew into uh, where uh, I was Hatfield. Like Lou Holtz. Kid from uh, yeah. well, Pat Sullivan? For Oklahoma State? No, 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 no. no, no. no. That would have been Pat, Pat Jones? Pat Jones, yeah. This has to be wrong. This had Jimmy Johnson listed all of a sudden. In that 1980, can't be, no. Yeah, that can't be right, right? That wasn't the case. So that's what it had listed over on. No, yeah, Jimmy Johnson Jimmy was, was in his second season. A, yeah, yeah, so that oh, was, wow. yeah, it was. And he left was, like in 87 or how so? How dare I doubt Winsipedia. But yeah, it was Jimmy Johnson versus Lou Holtz. Yeah. How do you, the last time these two teams played each so other. So, Lou, who won the game? No, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, I don't have you enough, have to. No, now. I'm not. You came out with it. No, I did my little blurb. You got that. Be satisfied with what you got. <laughs> I, I'm not going like full matinee show for you here. <laughs> I don't have enough spit in my mouth to do the Lou Holtz right now either. My mouth's a little bit dry. Right, we'll do so. it when we come back then. No. All right. So, how many Diet Cokes you got? How about 200,000 followers on uh, YouTube yeah. and we'll get there the we full. Craig, I'll do Lou Craig Holtz. doing for, Lou Holtz is. Really good. No, it's it, been a very long time because I, I haven't honestly thought about him. It, really, it was good because we're talking about yeah, him. I don't not like know. randomly bringing up Lou Holtz out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, I, that's the first time I've thought about him in a really, really long time. But anyways, there there you have it. That was the last time these two teams played. So this is the first meeting in over 30 years. Yeah, Jimmy in year two. And eventually, of course, the, uh, 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 my goodness, Oklahoma State had the, the great what the, uh, they had. Hartley Dykes and Barry Sanders, Thurman Thomas in the later part of that decade. Uh, and then he went on, of course, uh, maybe even in the middle of that, maybe before that, went on to play a coach at Miami. All right, Paul, uh, Arkansas and Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State win this game? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I think they do, too. And, and, I, and I hope they're sharp. Hope this is a good football game. But Arkansas, that was nice to see who they were last week also. Uh, TCU at home coming off that late night game where they – Woo, when I got home from the Midway game, doing a high school game, got back to the condo, had the game up. I'm like, oh, my God, Stanford was playing very well. And then TCU just overwhelmed them at the end with too many too many playmakers. Yeah, I loved uh, having Big 12 after dark. I, I thought that was awesome to come back from the high school game and to have TCU and, and not have just the game on, but like a bulk of the game was still in play by the time I got back. No, yeah. And we were on the road, so that was even more interesting. But that was fun. There's going to be more of that. There's going to be a lot more of that. Um, 
you know, the Arizona schools on Saturday night, both will be in action late night. So, yeah, Big 12 after dark is, is here and it's here to stay. But as far as TCU goes, uh, they had the best win of the entire league last week. Um, I don't think Stanford's some great team, but I think playing your season debut on the road in a cavernous rival stadium out on the West Coast late on a Friday night. I know the Friday probably doesn't matter as much if it was like week five and you're used to playing on Saturdays, but it's still just another weird wrinkle to that game. And so you came out and uh, in a lot of ways shot yourself in the foot multiple times uh, with stupid penalties, and uh, they just could not get out of their own way, and that was keeping that game close. But eventually they – they leaned on Josh Hoover. They played solid defense. Cam Clark's uh, or Cam Cook's a, a good running back, and I think they left some meat on the bone actually for TCU's. Like Savion Williams didn't play his best game, but he's going to have better games down the road. But I liked what I saw from TCU, and you see their potential. And that was an easy game to lose. I mean, because of all the circumstances, like that was a trap game right out of the gates, and they won it, and they won it convincingly. And uh, I think now they'll you know turn around this week and have a much. Um, a much bigger step down in terms of competition. So they should roll and should just worry about staying healthy and correcting the things they need to correct. But I thought they looked really solid. And I thought that was a, a really good win for Sonny Dykes and company that was very close late in that game to, to be in a really ugly loss, but uh, they, they were able to find a way to win. Yeah. I mean, this, this should not be too much of a test for them. I mean, I remember Baylor played long Island and, and long Island, you know, hung with him for a second and then, and then it was it was over. But uh, this shouldn't be this shouldn't be bad. CCU needs to get in more of a rhythm um, than they had last week in Stanford. But maybe Stanford's better than we we expected. They're they're one of the teams I think we know least about in the country. Possible to know, yeah, yeah. It's just like you know what what do you what do you really know about about them? And last week they they had a valiant effort before TCU overwhelmed them, like Craig said, with depth. So um, yeah, just kind of get in a rhythm. Get. Uh, you know, more reps for Josh Hoover, more, you know, have a better game for Savion Williams, get the, some of the new guys some time, and then move on to the next week. All right. Uh, Josh Hoover looks good, though. Like, when yeah, he, when no. he's on, he you can see why Sonny Dykes is like, yeah, this it's kid It's almost play. like they realized that, hey, they we got to do some things, and, and they did. They got it done. They won on the road uh, against Stanford. Now, this one here, don't look it up. Texas Tech at Washington State. Washington State, of course, a part of the Pac-2. You know the last time these two teams played? It's been recently. No? No, they were supposed to play. Or they were – this game was moved because Tech's game with Oregon this year was rescheduled because, I don't know, Oregon had something going on with their schedule uh, to try to preserve the rivalry with Oregon State despite being in different conferences. 1964. I feel like they made it a bowl game or something. That's wild two, to me. In yeah. the year before, they made it. They played uh, Texas Tech is two and zero. They've never, uh, they they haven't played since '64. And of course, Mike Leach went to Washington State after his time at, at Texas Tech. So yeah, um, I uh, think this is this is dicey. Yeah, it's dead. Uh, after it what we saw, be. yeah, it probably would be. Yeah, I, I think it would be. Um, but uh, you know, again. You know, like sometimes these things get weird, you know, like the look Maverick McIver, um, you know, coming back and just having like such a huge chip on his shoulder about that game and the other tech players. I, I kind of want to give them a, a tech a break a little bit, but they've got to be way better on defense, because if you give up 51 to ACU, then Washington State, uh, even, you know, without Cam Ward should should not be too far behind that. So, uh, or, I mean, so like should be better or more able to to score points in ACU. But um, I still think Tech's going to win this game. I think I think maybe they got a scare last week. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't think we know what Tech is just yet. I think we'll know after this weekend. Um, that was a really ugly debut. That secondary was not good at all. Defense, there just wasn't a lot to love. I give credit to Maverick McIver. I give credit to ACU's. You know, coaching that they did a really good job. I do think some of that was just like it's the first game. There's new guys playing more than they've played before, making starts they hadn't started before. Some of that, but I I do think there's a very real chance that some of that was just that's also who they are, and I think that's why this week's important because we'll learn a lot more of that. John Matier for Wazoo had a really big game. He's a Texas guy. A little L. He's from just outside yeah. of Dallas, yep. And he had a really nice showing against Portland State. Portland State obviously is not a, a huge measuring stick. They hung like 70 on them. So I don't think that translates exactly either. But I do think he can hurt Tech if Tech is 
uh, looking like they were looking last week. Uh, so I'm, I'm really intrigued by this game. Washington State's slight favorites, like under a field goal favorites last I looked. They're at home. It's a late Saturday night. Again, it's early in the year, so I don't know how much those late kicks matter is more when you're in a different type of a routine. But I do think like just playing late on a Saturday night in Pullman, Washington, it, it's, big, it's at Big 12 after dark. It's probably going to get weird, right? Um, there's a good chance at least. So, yeah, I, I'm i torn. Like, if you had asked me yesterday, I would have said, yeah, Tech wins this game. You asked me today, and like I'm, <laughs> I'm fighting not being pulled the other direction. I really don't have a good feel for who ultimately wins this game because – I don't know how much stock to put into Tech's performance last week of how much of that was just kind of a a first game thing and how much of that is like, no, this is a real problem for them. You know what I mean? Um, offensively, there was enough to like. They should be able to handle their business there. Um, you can still uh, you know, get some improvements here and there, but you know, I think overall that's not really what you're worried about. It's all about the defense for Tech this week, and so we'll see how they look, but uh, they're going to have to look much better or they're going to – they're going to lose this game if, if they don't. They're not going to have a magic rabbit out of the hat and over time to, to pull this one out, uh, in my opinion. So, yeah, this is an interesting one. And then if they go and they just, like, blow out the Cougs, then you can really wash away the first week and, you know, get back to hyping things up. But uh, I got to see this one before I know which direction to start leaning. Yeah, I, I was stunned when I walked in my condo and I turned the television on. I had not been really watching scores. Got in. I usually stay up for a couple hours no matter when I get home just to kind of digest the high school weekend or the games. And, man, I was like, holy crap. No, actually, I was not home. I was here in the studio doing our post-game show. That's right. I, I, and and I Friday was TCU. We, we that was could, the Friday game. Yeah, the Friday was Stanford. And I'm sitting there with Garrett, and I, I couldn't leave because I, I couldn't believe. And then they lined up to go for two, and Garrett turned off the, the damn television. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, he goes, got to go. Out. I didn't know. I thought it was yeah. over. Yeah. I, I, uh, I caught it because I was watching, you know, back and forth between Baylor and A&M. And, uh, Notre Dame and A&M. Or, yeah, but the Baylor and A&M oh, okay. games. Like, okay. So I was back and forth between those games. And then I saw on the crawl, I guess it was late in the second quarter, and I was like, ACU's. Yeah, I'm not, I'm what right, right now? Right there. Yeah. And well, they just kept they kept like tech kept getting a two score lead and feeling yeah. comfortable, and then they'd score, and then it was another one. And you know, they just they kept hacking away yeah. and keeping it close until it was so close that it pushed it into over. I mean, it, you got to really admire ACU and what they were able to do. But man, I mean, the part of me is no disrespect, tech fans, because I'm sure if she was on the other foot, you'd feel the same way. But I was kind of like. Evil me was like wanting to see what the other side of that tech loss would have looked like had they lost that game. But, you know, for them and for the league, thankfully they didn't because that would have yeah. been really, really bad. Well, they've all they've they've closed their seasons well. Now, last year they got smoked by Texas and Austin, but they have played well down the stretch, right? The problem has been early on. Yeah. And so I just can't imagine uh, what it would have been like to lose that game. Again, one – they score, they go for two, they win it. Who knows? But they didn't. Texas they Tech, won, yeah. they they got it done. So uh, it would be nice. It kind of erased. It would to me. It, it would rinse and re, it would re, it would get rid of the taste in your mouth, even with a win. If you go up to Pullman and win that game uh, against Washington State. All right. So Baylor at Utah. We've discussed this quite a bit. Baylor, I think, is overmatched. Emory, by the way. Uh, we do our uh, kind of a, a hundred words or less. I picked it like 30, I think it was like 33, 16 or something. I think that they'll, that Utah's defense is just kind of just too good. They weren't going to give up much here. If I'm wrong, that's great. But Emory has, he has the fighting Sikkims winning this game. He, he does. And he's, he's you know what happened? Give him a breathalyzer. Uh, here's yeah. the thing. Everybody in the in the in the premiums, oh Emory, and they'll never they'll not bring it up if they lose. No, but he's um, trying to just get some support I, from the people in the forums. Uh, last year was the first year, like when I I uh, started picking Baylor to lose that people were not calling me a naysayer. You know, like I picked them to lose a few times, and like Paul has no faith in the forums. But I, I mean, I, I just think the veteran nature of Utah will will. Uh, ultimately went out in this game. I think Baylor will will play well at times. I just I just think ultimately that there's too much experience on the other side. Yeah, I, I think Utah wins this football game. They're really good at home. Uh they looked really good in week number one. Rising Keithy 
uh, coming back and being able to flex their muscles a little bit and show how healthy they were and that it's it's go time once again for them uh, was something you knew was coming, but just to see it, kind of like watching Jalen Daniels, like you finally saw it rather than heard about it or talked about it, you saw it. And then that was really encouraging. Dijon Stanley as a receiving threat out of the backfield, uh, um, just getting started in his career really and uh, excited to see what he continues to do. But uh, I'm, I'm sure that's a name that is now very much more on the radar for Baylor coaches having watched that film because he had a yep. really nice game. So that's another guy to prepare for. And I just – I mean – Look, let's cut through it. Utah's just a better program right now. There's a better program. I yep. think they're older. I think they're um, at home. They have a more seasoned coach. talent yeah. and coaching. And, Identity. Yeah, like they have all those things that Baylor is searching for. So I think that was a nice first step for Dave Aranda and company against the team that it should have been an easy first step. It was. This is a whole different ball game. I don't know that they're ready to go into Salt Lake City and go beat the Utes. Yeah. Um but, hey, I do think they can make it interesting. I think they can make it competitive. I just don't think they have enough to actually pull the upset in the yeah. long run. So gonna I'm going Utah here. They're going to yeah. need a break. I, I was on When I was on that radio uh, show earlier this week, a muff punt, something that you, you just – they don't do that. Uh, Utah doesn't turn it over. They aren't, like, way up the food chain when it comes to the uh, pot plus and minus turnover ratio, but they're usually uh, in the positive part of it. Uh, maybe an extra turnover on their side each week.